Welcome to the Susan Sly Project, where entrepreneurs rule, startups launch, and the side hustle becomes the main hustle. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Susan Sly. All right, from growing a startup to the grittiness of saying, yeah, been there, done that, went to, you know, took it from small to big, and then did it again. And, and in the meantime, you know, started another company with his family and became the global leader in LinkedIn. My guest today is my great friend and someone I deeply admire, the amazing Marcus Murphy. And Marcus, I know you're about to get ready for a trip. Um, and it's so funny. We're, we're going to the same places. I just had Tanner on here from Blitz Metrics. We're all going to the same yep. places for different reasons. So you're heading off to Tel Aviv and London. Uh, what's, what's going on there? Yeah, well, first, thanks for the introduction. Uh, equal admiration back at you. I uh, love everything you do. I remember we actually just saw each other briefly and you yelled at me from stage and then I like left on a flight that, that same <laughs> second. So I was like, I tried to sneak in to see your talk and I was like, ah, because I just got off stage. Um, that's kind of the story of our life, isn't it, Susan? Just passing each other in the night on stage, uh, which is fun. Um, yeah, kind of doing the exact same thing in London, right? I'm, I'm heading over to Tel Aviv. I'm speaking at a, uh, a conference called DMI Expo, which is Digital Market International Expo, which is a mouthful. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm going to be speaking about partnerships and what we have coined a digital marketer, the customer value journey, which is pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, so 2,500 Israeli marketers sounds kind of like a fun, fun time. And then leaving from there, going to London, like you said, and doing an agency training in central London at a really cool museum. And then doing a meetup with a guy named Ryan Dice, who's our CEO and founder of Digital Marketer. And then Ryan speaking at Hyper Growth with our friends uh, from Drift.com, which is pretty cool. So busy, busy few days in, in London and then heading back and, you know, doing even more stuff when I get back here to Austin. I feel like I should have coordinated because we're going to Tel Aviv for family vacation. Um, oh, so, which is yeah. super cool. More and then family. I'm headed to London to speak um, at a, at a one day event for like a thousand entrepreneurs. And if, if we had, it's tough to see each other on stages. If we had a, like, you know, had a virtual coffee date, we could have coordinated, but I'm sure you're going to be amazing. Thanks. I appreciate that. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> I, you know, I love new audiences, right? It's funny because I've never been to Tel Aviv. I've never been to that part. I've, I've been to, you know, Egypt and down all the way to South Africa, but this is a really interesting place. The, the, the people who are putting on the event have told us like cultural norms. The fact that this event's on a Sunday, which is traditionally like our off day here is their work day uh, mm -hmm. because the majority of that country celebrates what they call the Sabbath on that Saturday. And so there's a lot of people that are going to be kind of like, you know, but there's also 400,000 marketers in Israel and Israel's you know, this big and seeing that, you know, they don't typically travel well is what I was told. So people don't, won't come down to, to our event called Traffic Conversion Summit or they won't travel to the States or the, the UK, but they do a ton. Like they're very involved if people come over and they're very appreciative when people come over. So I'm excited to see what that's going to be like. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that because Israel is really becoming one of the, the global tech capitals. So I know there are some different plugins that plug into, you know, Schedule Once, which they change now, is based out of Israel. There's a bunch of companies there. Google has big offices there. And when we were researching all these cool places we were going to go, it was like, oh, and, you know, P.S., Herod was here. And down the street is the Google headquarters. You know, it's, yeah, it's so... Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think that we miss that. So I know that you have a global audience, but here in the States, the one thing I really realized by going out of the U.S. was that there is just a much older world that exists. So we, we have nothing pre-colonial here. So in terms of our, our history of growth, like there, I'm taking, um, there's a thing there called the waning wall, which is a couple thousand years old. And it's essentially where people bring their prayers to God, right? It's a mm -hmm. very, very popular thing in Jerusalem when you go there. So I'm actually collecting all these different prayers from people around the office and taking their thing to go put into the wall. But I sat around, I'm just like, we have nothing like that. Like we just can't sit there and be like, oh yeah, this is where Herod sat. This is where, you know, Jesus walked or whatever. Like th th that kind of concept to be like, wow, I'm in a place that's that old is such a humbling experience that we just kind of, I just never really get here. Um, I can go to Boston and see, you know, where tea was thrown in the harbor or something, but I don't have, <laughs> I don't have that. I don't have that history here, which is, which is what I'm really excited about. Yeah, it's, it's going to be amazing. We'll have to connect after that. And I feel like one of the, you know, one of the things about traveling anywhere, especially whether it's seeing the ancient ruins in Rome or, or um, the temples of Angkor Wat in Cambodia, it's this, this gravity of history. And I feel like a lot of the entrepreneurs that I'm speaking in front of, talking to, they feel the world speeding up 
so much. And just when someone grasps one thing, something changes, right? And then suddenly right. you're sitting there looking at Google and a 2000 year old Coliseum, you know, it, it's, okay. it's interesting. Let's, let's talk yeah, about that. I know. Yeah. We can talk about other stuff here. Yeah. Sorry about this history lesson and like where I'm traveling. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 The listeners are always like, our viewers on YouTube, they're always like, we love the, the, the chatter because we, they learn so much, the banter, but we can, we can totally relate it because if people are feeling like the world is speeding up and they're, they're, they have that sense like, oh my gosh, I can't keep up. Let's, let's bring it down to a couple things. So one thing I want to ask you is you speak globally. You're, you're the leading LinkedIn expert. Let's talk about that. LinkedIn has recently done some changes and I feel like some of the, the people are coming to me going, just when I thought I'd mastered it, you know, they changed a whole bunch of stuff. So what has LinkedIn changed recently? Yeah. You know, I think that most of what LinkedIn has changed recently is the way that we engage with content. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I would say that most people are like, oh no, like, so nothing on the profile has really changed. The profile, if you've ever gone through any one of my trainings, either on LinkedIn Learning or on anywhere, you can just look it up there somewhere, right? I've done podcasts on everything. And it's literally just maximizing the ability to have your profile start conversations. So I think that's the one biggest thing people miss is like the profile is simple. You don't change a lot of it. There's not a lot of new things. You can add media to it now. Um, but the biggest thing that hasn't changed about it is that if your summary, if your content, if your photos, if your, your entire page is not set up in a way that wants someone to engage with you and start a conversation, then you really lose no matter what happens on your profile, right? So that's old hat. Like everybody has that. That's, you can go find how to maximize your profile. What people are realizing now is that content is massively king on LinkedIn. There's 600 million people on the platform. There's 9 billion content impressions a week, like in the actual newsfeed. And that's driven by about 1% of the population. So if you do the math, it's like 4%. Mm -hmm. And that's crazy. That's why we see this big viral effect. Like I've got 11,000 followers on there. And by the way, getting followers on LinkedIn is 11,000 might as well be a hundred thousand. It's like insane to get people to follow you. So if you're sitting there looking at your like number and you're like, I got like 476, like don't, don't trip. Don't worry about it. It actually takes a lot of time and people have to, like it takes putting out a ton of content. And so the changes that I see are just the ease of what that kind of content looks like. There has a heavy focus on video right now, like massive focus on video and not like the ones that are doing really well. If you look up a, a, one of my friends and, and personal like LinkedIn homie who I think is like the queen of LinkedIn, the face of LinkedIn, her name is Goldie Chan. And Goldie basically did like a 500 day video challenge where she just had her phone and just made these quick videos that are a minute long and talking about the things that happen in her day. And she has grown exponentially, um, 50,000 followers on LinkedIn and just wow. going bananas. But her strategy was simple. People don't necessarily they don't necessarily only want to see video, right? Like I, I see that I'll put up a post about something ridiculous. Susan. like I, I put up a post about how for therapeutic reasons in the office, I go shred things. I saw that one. Yeah. And that one, <laughs> that one has a hundred thousand views on it. And it's really silly. Like last night I put up something. I was like, I saw these kids. They looked like they were nine or 10 years old and they were drinking black coffee. And I was like, wait, what point as a child, do you need that? And two, when did you start drinking coffee? And I just put that up there and it had 148 comments and 30,000 views on it. And I'm just like, man, people really just want to be a part of a conversation. It's not necessarily like, oh man, I need to put up all this technical content or I need to put up this video that's just so polished and amazing. It's like, no, people want quick consumable content where they feel like they're a part of the conversation. I think that LinkedIn is finally learning how to create a platform that really enables those conversations and they really tap into it. So the biggest change that just came out on LinkedIn is that LinkedIn Live is rolling out. So LinkedIn Live is like something that I equally hate and love at the same time. I'm like so scared of it because I'm just waiting for like cat videos and weird stuff to show up. But you know, like you know, Instagram TV has also become, you know, there's some really good stuff on there and there's some stuff that's just ridiculous. I'm hoping that the professional framework of the platform gives us better content in those live videos but so far you've seen like a slow beta rollout so it doesn't go out to the full population for a little while because right now they're still collecting to see if it's going to be a train wreck or not but what you see is you see a platform that's going in the direction of 
content and easing the way and giving us more tools on how to express ourselves, which you saw like there's new reactions now on LinkedIn, which is like heart and I'm puzzled and clap and thumbs up. And it's like, okay, cool. That's like old because, but on a professional platform, people need to have more ways to express themselves. And so I think that you're going to see more tools around content, how we distribute it and how we create it, um, which is really exciting because I think that that, that is where this platform differentiates itself from the rest of social, social platforms. That's, uh, that's fascinating. And I didn't know about LinkedIn live. Like I do my, my weekly you crush LinkedIn live season. You oh, well, I maybe I'll have to move bulletproof Monday over there. <laughs> the, I have like 50 million questions. I'm going to narrow it to like two. So yeah. Yeah. when is accepting, I have, I have right <laughs> now I have hundreds of people in the queue oh, who want to follow me on LinkedIn. And one of the things I've learned from you is that who you follow dictates who LinkedIn suggests to you. And if you're, you know, if you're pivoting your brand, and I know many of our listeners, they have a day job, a side hustle. It's never been a better time to start a business in my opinion, but you know, they don't want to have everyone from their office follow them. What do you recommend? You know, I think that there's a platform, like if you, everybody on here, don't add me on Facebook. Like just don't do it. I'm not, I'm, I only have a thousand connections on there and I personally know the majority of them uh, or they're like friends of my wife or friends from, you know, so-and-so. But I, I really think that I'm trying to create platforms where they have a purpose. And so Facebook, I don't use it for that. I'm not, I'm not trying to get to their 5,000 max out for you to think that I'm important. Like I don't need that. I need people that can see pictures of my kids and I don't feel weird about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Instagram, same thing. I have a very open profile on there. It's totally fine. If I put something up on there, it's safe to be like, you know, this is, this is what is okay to put out there on LinkedIn. I traditionally, unless you're trying to sell me something and you haven't made that clear and you're backhanding that you're kind of backing your way into it by just being connected to me. So you can send me a very thoughtless message in my inbox. You're going to get a connection from me, but then the only reason why I did that is to wait on that message. And then I can absolutely educate you on why you shouldn't do it. And I, I do you spend all, sorry to interrupt you, but I have this because I literally, my LinkedIn messaging used to be fun and now it's not fun. It is the most inane amateur hour. I wrote this um, LinkedIn article called don't get married on the first date. I am like sick of people asking to marry me on the first date. Like, I'm just (laughs) like, let me tell you how I really feel Marcus. So do you spend like all that time educating people? (laughs) Check this out. So you would be surprised. I feel like I'm a pretty busy person, uh, but I think everybody's busy, right? Like if you're out there doing or building anything significant, you're pretty busy. And everybody like says the balance and freedom is the goal. It's like, mm, I, I think that I like to rest when it's appropriate to rest. And I love to sprint when it's appropriate to sprint. And I love the kind of minutia that is everything in between that's not big spikes or valleys. I love all that stuff. But for me, when it comes down to like, what do I do in my free time? What do I do when I've got some downtime? I'm responding to messages. So let me show you something. So this is my phone. This is, these are all messages, right? Yeah. So this is, I'm going to show you something. This is just, this right here is just this week. Mm. So I'm trying to show you that like people, people hit me up all the time. And what I, what I do in there is I go through and I say, okay, you've taken the time to do, send me a message, right? Most of you have sent, sent me a message. You probably even used one of your credits on your LinkedIn, you know, paid account so that you can actually send this to me because we're not connected. Um, but what people usually do is they start with themselves. And I typically write off that message almost immediately. And I do have like kind of some canned responses I like to put in there to be like, Hey, you know, like this is probably what you should do moving forward to have a better success rate of people that want to work with you. But it, I really, the time where I spend a lot of my personal time is when someone gets it right. Like I might not be interested in their product at all, but sometimes I like to affirm it because I know that they're going to take that information and tell somebody else like, Hey, this guy actually got back to me and he told me these things to do for the next Mm. person that I'm going to interact with. And a lot, the majority of people that are reaching out to me are are either very inexperienced sales folks um, or they're very inexperienced veteran entrepreneurs who don't necessarily know how to use the platform and how to position it where they do the, I mean, look at, I mean, LinkedIn has so much information there. Like there should be no thoughtless outreach. It should, like Susan, if somebody's sitting around going, hey, Susan, nice to meet you. Um, let's get some pizza and go back to my place. It's kind of the conversation in a nutshell with what I get on LinkedIn. And then I'll have to say to them like, hey man, you know what's really interesting? 
if you would have gone through the proper stages of awareness, if you would have gone from like, hey, you looked at me, I looked at you, I said something, we shook hands, then we built this rapport where I, you're not dangerous, and then then you ask me a question once I feel that like you're okay, then there's a lot more runway. But people typically skip six steps and go right for like, let's get married. And it's like, you're a psychopath. Like, yeah, built no rapport. And so I feel <laughs> that in a huge way. But what I do is I do have, um, I do have people that are in there, which is, I know it's not, it's not a fair advantage. Uh, if you don't have like an EA that can just go through your stuff, but I have people that are in there too, but I also, um, do kind of set a criteria for myself, just like accepting people. Um, if they send me a message that has a personalization piece to it, I typically do read it. I like to see the mutual connections. I usually do look for that, but now as you get to like the 11,000 or more connections, uh, post like 10,000, you're typically connected to almost everybody. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's, that sounds weird, but it is like six degrees of separation with people that you're like, holy cow, I'm, how am I connected to this person? Um, so I really do think that it comes down to the personalization and thoughtfulness they put into that message. And if I feel like it's not personalized or they don't have any kind of, you know, like tracking it back to understanding what my themes are and what I care about and why they're reaching out to me, I typically will not engage with it. The, the I, <laughs> you're, I think you're like, beautifully patient. That's what I want to say. I, I got one recently. It was like, Susan, have you ever thought of doing a podcast? You know, right in my profile, it says podcast host. Like then I got one. Have you ever thought of write, writing a book? And I'm like <laughs> author of seven books, like at least read the profile. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it, I still love it. It's my, I always like in LinkedIn to the country club. Mm -hmm you know, and Twitter is like the ghetto. Um, but yeah. I love, I love yeah, LinkedIn. Little ghetto time that. Too, though, you know. <laughs> so yeah. more video, yep. I'm seeing people being more of themselves. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I would say use with caution, you know, um, like mm -hmm. I, I am, um, if I'm going into a meeting and I will look at all the profiles and one of our KPIs uh, is if we're going into a meeting for my um, tech company, that whoever is orchestrating the meeting goes on LinkedIn, pulls all the profiles mm -hmm. in the calendar, sends the links to all the profiles, because we like to do a ton of research on the front end. And I just want to, my, my little piece of wisdom for anyone is I went into a meeting and um, it's for like a, a massive, massive project. And the you know, who are the decision makers? 96% of decision makers are on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I went in there, I saw the chief decision maker. Um, I looked at where he went to university. I looked at, at articles he's published. And the thing I loved about link, love about LinkedIn is unlike other platforms, you can see everything that that person liked and shared. And that, and that person is essentially telling you how to communicate with them, what's important to them. Yeah. And, um, you know, and it was the difference between them wanting a second meeting and potentially not. That's great. Which was huge. Yeah. yeah. I think it, you know, it's really funny. It's easy to stand out on LinkedIn right now. Um, mm -hmm. If you, if you are not kind of like the spray and pray model of hoping that something lands and somebody <laughs> gets back to you, then you're doing it right. I mean, Susan, you literally like, this is, this is the best way to use the platform. And it takes a little bit of time, which nobody wants to do. Like mm -hmm. you can find out, you're talking about like a gritty, you want to know what separates people that are in like the startup grimy kind of gritty phase of a business. Mm -hmm. It's the amount of work they're willing to put in that's appropriate for the platform. Like when it looks at, like LinkedIn, you better do your research and you better not sit around and try and figure out how to hack it. Like I have people that come up to me at conferences and they're like, you know what I figured out how to do? I know how to send like 300 messages at one time on LinkedIn. I'm like, that's not the point, man. The point yeah. is, is that they gave you enough information on there to personalize it and make it feel like you're not one of those people. Don't try and like, if you are a grimy, gritty, amazing entrepreneur, don't try and like expedite the process through growth hacks. Like you need to go through the process. The process is the most beautiful part about that. Go through the failure, go through the hard stuff and the minutia and the crap that you don't want to do, but you have to, like, that's the people that win and the people I continue to run across. Like, and I'm sorry, I get a little passionate about this, but I keep running across people all across the world whenever I speak. And I see people that are winning and the people that are winning 
are willing to put in the sweat equity to do mm -hmm. so. And they're not trying to find like, what's my easiest route between A and B? They're trying to go, what's the right path between A and B? And I don't know how long that takes, but I'm going to do it. And I'm going to make sure that I do it because I'm passionate. And I care about this thing. And I'm not just trying to find like the easy way out, which is the majority of the population. You want to separate yourself from the majority of entrepreneurs, be willing to do the hard stuff. And that absolutely reigns true on all these platforms. Um, and it's just not easy on LinkedIn, like to create and curate content and go through people's profiles and try to personalize it. That is not the easy route, but it is the most fulfilling route. And it's the reason why people will get back to you is because you do like that, <laughs> the stuff that nobody else is willing to do. Like you're the one cleaning up the dog poop, right? You're the one who's doing the thing that people, it's not the glamorous parts of life, but guess what? It falls on you. And that is, is awesome that LinkedIn has created this platform. I think that's the reason why I fell in love with the platform in the first place. It gave me a voice. It gave me a platform. And I'm a guy willing to do the hard work. And it pays off and I get recognized for it. So a lot of people are like, man, I just want to build a brand on here. Cool. Go do the work. Like roll up your sleeves. Yeah. Um, do things that people aren't willing to do. That's how you stand out. So I love that. Anyway, my rant is over. No, it's, it was a good one. I, one of my mentors said, be willing to do today what others won't so you can do tomorrow what others can't. And Dave Ramsey, he says, live like no one else so you can live like no one else. It's, it's doing the work. Harvey McKay, who's my mm -hmm. personal mentor, Harvey, um, I was just with Harvey when I was with Perry. I don't know if you saw that video. That's a uh -huh. hilarious video, driving really in Perry's roles with Harvey in the passenger seat, Perry. Um, Quite the and, duo if you get those two together, by the way. Oh, yeah. It was so fun. And and I was like, I said to Harvey, I'm like, you have to hire Perry. You, you mm -hmm. too. Um, salacious plug there for Perry. But the the... the one of the things is is doing that front end research. Let's talk about advertising because this is you know so many people they're they're you know they've they've been advertising on Facebook then they're advertising on Instagram they haven't started to advertise on LinkedIn it is a different animal man you know yeah. I just I just taught this class uh, called marketing on LinkedIn for LinkedIn learning and you know people get I mean you know if you want to run traffic on Facebook like you really need to go to an expert to figure that out you mm -hmm. really do because I mean they're especially if you're putting a lot of money to the platform right and if you look at any other kind of you know it's it's crazy I actually just just heard about this but people are now advertising on Waze like W A Z E the app that everybody in the world uses to get anywhere um, and I think it's unbelievable it's like um it's geo tracking people and so when they drive into a certain area it pops up like here's this thing that you can go do and it's like genius right like people are making yeah. so much money off of it no one's talking about it so there you go yeah um, I love it the LinkedIn platform for advertising is so straightforward, but everybody who's ever had a complaint about it is that it's too expensive. Um, it is unbelievably self-serve. So you can go in and create a campaign and, you know, have a banner ad or have a display ad. Um, but what I don't, I just, I, I agree with people that I don't think that that's a good way to use the platform. Like, I don't think that's a good way to advertise. Most of the PPC is really expensive and mm -hmm. trying to compete with like professional services, it gets really expensive. Um, the thing that I think is really great is like, if you continue to think about content, like one thing I tell everybody to do is you have a personal profile page. If you have a business, you need to create a LinkedIn business page. When you do that or display page, when you do those pages, then you have the ability to share content. Uh, you share content in the form of video, you share content in the form of, you know, whatever your posts are, you can create graphics and you know, whatever, but anything that gets really good organic traction, on the content, you can boost it. This is where we've seen like a huge response. It's where I continue to tell people to put their money is when you have a really good piece of content that is doing really well organically, and then you can put money behind it and boost it. So it shows up in the feed for your targeted audience. And it's really targeted, Susan. Like mm -hmm. have a, there's a solution on LinkedIn called sales navigator and sales navigator allows you to kind of go, okay, here's my search term. My search term is agencies. Right. And then if I put in agencies, it shows me, here's my results for everybody who has agency in their profile. It's like 5 million people. Right. Then if I go, Oh, agencies in you know, Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay. And that's a random city, by the way, <laughs> connection to Cincinnati. But if you say that, then it goes down to, you know, 20,000 people that say agency. Then I go, okay, director, owner, uh, GM principal, right. And those kinds of search criteria, and then it drops down again to 5,000. And then I go, okay, well now they also have to have this in there, but it'll show me, it'll, it'll give me all of those people that are in there and the targeting, like, like on LinkedIn navigator is the same on 
content. So you can start to really put your content into a market with where you're targeting very specific people in an industry or that have a very specific title. And that's where people are like, wow, you see your content go from like 20,000 views to like 200,000 views because it's just getting to the people that actually care about what that topic is. Mm -hmm. Um, So I always tell people that if you're going to invest money in the advertising side of LinkedIn, sure. If you're a huge company, do the display because you have a a budget you need to burn anyway and you need to put it in there. And there's probably going to be people that just awareness. It's like a billboard. I always laugh when I worked at Yelp, we, we were dealing in national advertising. Like that was a big part of the majority of my clients were huge companies like Jamba Juice and whatever. And they wanted to one, take control all of their profiles on, on Yelp, but they also wanted to show up on all across the platform. And they weren't necessarily looking at a click through rate. They were looking at awareness. They were Mm. like, how many times did we show up? How many, how many, how much inventory did we take advantage of? Because they saw it as like the new modern billboard. If people see us and then we're top of mind, right? So I think that place still works for big companies that have money and budget to do that. But for the majority, like entrepreneur, like 15 to 20 employees, like trying to get to seven figures, eight figures, you're looking at trying to figure out how to get the right people to consume your content to start a conversation. So if you put that money into boosting your content, that's organically already doing really well. I mean, you win on the advertising side of, of LinkedIn. And here's the other one people don't know about. So the one that they don't know about is everybody, you get these messages, right? Like you get these messages. Yes. There's no way to go in and manipulate the platform. Like no, everybody says that they can do it. You'll get red flag. They have a massive compliance department. You're just waiting around to get caught. Um, if you want to, you can actually sponsor in-mail messages. Mm-hmm. So you can pay to take in-mail messages, target it to a, a group of people or a CSV of people that you want to have that message. And they will send those messages in bulk, but they won't do it at once. They do it in a trickle format because remember the site itself is about personalization and they don't want to lose that feel. So you can pay for a sponsored email message and it can go to, you know, several hundred people. And it just, there's a time frame of a couple of weeks that it trickles out to them, but they will get like a sponsored email message that shows up in their inbox um, and you can do it in bulk. So I think that's still those two kind of ways of getting out your message, like the in-mail message would be great for people with events, right? Like, Hey, this event's coming up. Just want to get in touch with you. The sponsored content. If you actually have good content, (laughs) if you have good content, the, the, the community will tell you that. And if with the organic kind of engagement, and when that happens, that should be a light bulb for you to be like, I need to put money behind this. And you can't do it on your personal profile. People always say like, can I boost this? I had a really great organic post has to come from a business page in order to boost it because that's where you're going to get, access to the LinkedIn campaign manager. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. the like, okay, <laughs> so much yeah. information. Like, sorry, I know that's a lot. I know it's a lot. No, it's so good. I was thinking I bought one thing off LinkedIn and just it'll kind of frame in about the advertising. So I, um, I had a, you know, a, it was a banner ad for uh, MIT to mm-hmm. do a certificate in artificial intelligence and machine learning. And the certificate was, I don't know, like $5,000 or something. Mm-hmm. So I clicked through and I ended up doing the certificate, right? Awesome. And I think if you're MIT or you're, you know, whatever you are, those kinds of things make sense because they they know very clearly what their ROI is in their CPA, like their cost per acquisition on a $5,000 certificate. It might be a thousand. And that's what people have to understand. And even there's, let's talk about this. There are a lot of changes. Um, You know, I had Dennis Yu on, I had Tanner on. There are a lot of changes happening with Facebook advertising, LinkedIn advertising, even over at YouTube, they just brought in, I think it was a thousand more physical humans. Um, so they have the AI reading stuff. Now they have humans. There are longer delays to get ads approved. So get out your crystal ball, right? So here in America, especially as we approach the next election, yeah. I'm seeing social media companies are putting more dollars behind verifying that ads are true, boosted posts are true, yeah. all of those things. So let's put on the crystal ball. And, and what would you predict in terms of the best place for someone to put in ad spend if they're just say starting a business or they've got like that small business doing under a million dollars you mentioned. Gosh, you know, no LinkedIn would not like my answer to this because uh, I'm just good thing. I don't work for them. Right. So (laughs) um, if you're under a million dollars, you can have the same amount of impact by just having good content and growing your personal brand. And what I mean by that is like, I don't want a bunch of people to hear me say, grow your personal brand. Like if you have a business, I think that the majority of people in your company 
<clears throat> can, can take your message further if it's curated than the majority of advertising that you can buy. And I, and I want to say it just very clear because a lot of people are like, well, I'm not an MIT and I, I don't have, I don't even know what the hell is CTA or, or click through rate or LTV and all these, all these terms you use. Like, ah, like, you know, I, I think what I would tell that person, cause there's a lot of million dollar businesses out there that have margins that make them feel like a $40,000 business. And yeah. so I don't necessarily use that as my benchmark for success in life. But I do think that if you're sitting around thinking about how do I get in the game of advertising on, and here's my crystal ball. My crystal ball is advertising is going to, um, in, in, in a avatar between kind of like a 500,000 to a million is going to take a plummet, is going to decrease um, on the LinkedIn platform for sure. Because people are starting to realize there's a massive amount of viral impact on content and what they can do without it. So you can have a business page. You never have to use campaign manager or boost into your content and still see a crazy organic campaign because you've tagged the right people and they have massive following. So it was just really funny. We have a, one of our, one of our folks here at digital marketer put out a post on LinkedIn. A lot of people do this. Like they're just, they'll tell me things They're like, Oh, I just posted something on LinkedIn. And they're really excited about it. So I like match their excitement. I'm like, yes, you should keep doing that. That's awesome. And it, it, she's like, yeah, I got like three comments. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's great. Like three people, three people cared enough to stop in their day to write something. Um, but I was sitting around going like, you know, I'm, I'm very used to a different response. Right. But I know what I'm doing. I know how to create the content and how to put position it and tag things to make it go. And, uh, so what I did was I went and wrote on her post. I said, it was really thoughtful. She wrote out this beautiful post about like, Oh, you should ask these questions. And it was really wonderful. So all I did was I just became a troll and I wrote, I agree with none of this. <laughs> I wrote that on her. <laughs> and so what happened was, is that everyone in my, everyone that, that follows me saw that I wrote on her post so on my activity feed. It shows up in the feed. It says, Marcus wrote on this post. And I'm like, what is that post? So now I have people on her post writing. Well, I think this is great, Marcus. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, blah, 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 right. And so people are, then people who know me are like, he's clearly trolling and like, whatever. But all of a sudden she got, you know, a couple of thousand views. And now she has, you know, I think it's like 20 comments and it's this whole conversation because someone that had the following or brought something to that engaged with a piece of content. So like for me, when I, when I announced that I did my LinkedIn learning course and had the video that went up, Jeff Wiener, who's the CEO of, of LinkedIn wrote on it, right? Like he's like, Oh, congratulations, Mark. This is really awesome. And when he did that, he has 7 million followers. Mm -hmm. So he, that, that post was like went bananas. Right? So I think people, if they understand the game, <laughs> they won't have to spend as much. And I think they're going to, they're slowly starting to understand the game because there's more people like me out there in the world that are talking about what you can do without really spending a dime and really using the tools on the platform. Um, but then I think if you're a big business out here, like if you're, if you're really like, you've got some budget and you know, these acronyms and you understand what advertising looks like and the competitiveness that comes with that, I believe my crystal ball is that you're going to increase your money on LinkedIn times 10. And the reason why is because you're going to realize that their, their goal is to crest over a billion in the next year or so. And when you have uh, uh, that kind of force, 600 million people that are all professional and why, like, think about it. We come, I always say that I was just literally said this in, in the last podcast that I was doing uh, earlier this morning. Why do people come to the platform is a really good question to start asking yourself before you put money into it. Like mm -hmm. the old Facebook, do you remember when ads first started on Facebook? Yeah. I do. Yeah. Uh -huh. Everybody was sitting around and I, I remember competing with Facebook for where people put their ad dollars when I was at Yelp. And I used to always say, I was like, man, p buyer intent is the question, period. Like, mm -hmm. is your avatar there? And did they come there to be sold? Because if they didn't come there to be sold, the majority of whatever you put in front of them won't be clicked on. Like, if, remember the, the, the yellow pages used to be a thing. Remember that? Yep. I used to advertise them back in the 90s when I owned my health club. Because it was great because why was the yellow pages so good? Why was it so effective? Is because people were going there to buy something or hire somebody or do, they're looking. Why, if you're not, if you're in the yellow pages, what are you doing there other than just trying to find a solution or to your issue or your problem? And so the same thing happens on these sites. Like I don't go to Facebook per se to make purchasing decisions, but actions I've taken on other things for retargeting helps understand like, I'm still looking for it, but I'm over here now. But if you go to like a place like LinkedIn or a place like Yelp, Yelp specifically is like, where am I eating tonight? Where am I going right now? I need a plumber. I need a you know, professional service on LinkedIn. I go there because why? Like Susan, I'm going to ask you that same question because I think it's good for other people. Why, why do you go to LinkedIn? I go for two reasons. So one is going back to what I was saying. So in, in my AI company, there, there's me often 
there's me who doesn't have a PhD from Carnegie Mellon. There's, I have a science degree, so proud of that, yay. Um, but there's, there's me and we're talking all these tech specs. So we're talking CPUs versus VPUs. We're talking edge processing versus cloud processing and deep learning and, and I have to keep up. And one of the ways that I have an advantage is I'm willing, like you said, to do the hustle mm -hmm. after the kids go to bed go on LinkedIn, research the profiles of every decision maker I'm meeting with, see what they like, spend like literally half an hour per person, I know as creepy as that sounds, but looking at what do they like, what do they comment on, what do they share, what did they write articles? I had a, a meeting, I'm gonna do a rant, Marcus. So Good. we had a meeting with the largest company in its space in the world, and I can't say which company, but the biggest, <laughs> the biggest, um, the biggest one. And, and so I went on there and I read about this woman who was going to be in the meeting. I read her LinkedIn article. So my first words out of my mouth, I was like, you know, I just want to congratulate you. I read your LinkedIn article and, you know, totally agree with what you're saying about artificial intelligence. And she was blown away. Mm -hmm. So this is the number one reason I go on is to research. The number two reason I go on is because I'm a professional and I want to associate with other professionals. So I'm not really interested in your cat playing with yarn. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm on LinkedIn during the day. That's when I'm on there or late at night doing research. So that's why I'm on. Yeah, no. And I think that that, first of all, you're in the top five reasons that everyone uses it, but it also provides professional context, like you said. So when I sit around and I'm like, man, what kind of advertisers want to go on and, and use or advertise on LinkedIn? One, anybody who's interested in accurate data, right? Accurate data is pretty huge. They, LinkedIn gives you a place to put so much of your personal and professional data on there that I think it's really incredible to understand that like people are on there. It's the biggest networking party on the planet. It is literally like, why are you on LinkedIn? It's because I want to be found and I want to be known and I want to know others. That is typically what it really like boils down to and without getting really technical is that people put it on there as a credibility piece. It used to be like, this is where my resume and CV lives. This is who I am. You know, this is where I want to go find a job and people and employers will like, look at my credibility. It has become that for sure. It still serves that purpose, but now with a, with a resume site, you don't have a reason for people to come back to the site. The reason LinkedIn had a major problem in the early days to kind of overcome that because when do you, when do you need a resume? Well, when you're looking for a job. So if you have a, right. if everybody kind of occupies a job one to three years, then you really only have people coming back for, you know, every once in a while, every three or so years. And that's not good. It's the reason why they launched this kind of really great content platform is because you come back to learn, you come back to listen, you come back to do research, you come back to see what other people are saying. You're coming there for so many different reasons, but I believe that the advertiser that wins on LinkedIn is the one who pays attention to understanding that people are coming there for one humongous word. And I hate to say this, but it's so true is they're coming there for significance. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that is because it's giving someone a personal profile. That's their brand, right? This is your professional brand. That's what they, that's what they want you to feel like. This is your professional brand online. You better take this seriously and you should, but the significance around it also gives you kind of like, Hey, here's a before state and after state. Here's where you could go. And so if you have anything associated with somebody feeling significance or that you have a product or service that helps somebody catapult from where they are currently to where they want to be, then this platform is full of 600 million of those. Mm. It's unbelievable. Even from the highest ranking people that are on there, the big influencers of the world, all of them are vying for attention and they really do want to make sure that they're getting the right message out to people. And I think it's just a beautiful like way to look at how do I get my message out to more people and get in front of, you know, people who have a professional context that advertiser wins on, on LinkedIn for sure. I hope that makes sense. It does. That's it's powerful. I love what you said about buyer intent because it's the, uh, you know, I call it the P and P, the post and pray, right? Yeah, you know, to your point about the gal at your office, she's like, I've got the best one and I, please God, you know, this is gonna be the one. And, um, and so often I see people, especially small business owners, they're doing the P and P and, and they're not thinking, why is someone on this platform? Yeah. And, and like you, like my Facebook personal profile, I don't accept people on there. My, you know, my dad's on there, my in-laws, that's where I post the kids, you know, the, then there's the, my 
Facebook, you know, business page, which has mm-hmm. like, I think almost 700,000 people or something, but mm-hmm. you know, it's looking at why that person's there. And I love what um, Tanner said when he was here. And if, if you're watching this or on YouTube, or if you're listening on iTunes or wherever you are, if you didn't hear Tanner's show, check it out. Tanner said, your, your customer will tell you what they want to hear from you. And I think that people spend way too much time going, I want to deliver this content because it's important to me. And to your point, look at your content, see what you've been posting lately that has the most traction, your fans, followers, customers, whatever, potential customers, they're telling you what they want. Like when I post stuff about like, you know, being vulnerable or I'm backstage at a stadium or whatever, people love that because they, they see that side of me. Now that doesn't mean they would love it. If you posted something like that, they like the shredder. I don't know. (laughs) Who knows what they like? I have a weird following of people, so it's pretty funny. Yeah, I'm one of your weird followers, so I, I, I well, dig I it. Appreciate that. <laughs> you following that's good. Um, you know, it's kind of funny. It's like a jurisprudence of final thought for all of this because, you know, it's it's not really the platform, right? It's it's a mindset, and I and I really want to kind of, I want to I want to almost end there because I feel like I, I know for a fact that we could talk about LinkedIn or Yelp or Facebook forever and ever and ever, but really like it's the people behind it, right? It's the, it's the people behind it and the mindset you have to have. Like, I think that most people are going to get the, get a a lot out of LinkedIn um, if they put in the work, like I just mentioned before. And Mm -hmm. if they actually, um, if they actually know and take the time to figure out who they're trying to communicate with, because I think you're right. I think a lot of people just post a post. And here's a, here's a really here's a really sad thing that I get. I get people that don't want to post content because they only have they only have 500 people they're connected to. Mm-hmm. And I sit around. And I'm like, man, you know, like or or somebody puts something on YouTube, Susan, and they're not you, and they see that they've got you know 600 views, right? And I always sit around and they're like, well, maybe I shouldn't just keep doing this daily vlog thing. I only have like 600 people that are looking at it every day. That's 600 people. You have a list of people that you are now connected to that are connected to other people. You have people that are looking and viewing your content that are captive to you. Like you need to give those people, like my friend who has just a tremendous following, it's like millions of people on Instagram, right? And I I always ask her, I'm like, like, what happened? Like, how did this happen? She goes, I served the people that were willing to follow me at 500 to 5,000, to 500,000, to a million. Mm-hmm. And I've always made it about them. So like, if you sit around and you look at the 500 connections you have, that's your audience. That's the people. What, what are you going to do for those people that they will share your content to a much broader audience, right? Those people that are viewing your YouTube station right now are taking the time to view it. And how do you serve them? How do you give them value? Because if you serve them at 600, you're going to see that that same service translate to 600,000. And it's a really interesting way and mindset. That's the reason why I want to end there is because I want to be somewhat agnostic to the platforms and the vehicles. I just want people to understand that, that the people that win are, are willing to do the hard work and they're serving others. And, and that is literally, whether it's 600 or 6 million, they're, they're, they're dedicated to serving that group that chooses to engage with them and follow them. And I think that's the reason why my stuff grew pretty quick. I think it's the reason why you obviously are astronomically a rocket ship in terms of how you've grown. And I think people just really see like you're just giving back and understanding them and you're willing to do the hard work, right? I, I just, I just hope that that's, I hope that translates regardless of LinkedIn or anything else. That's a, it's a beautiful finish. And, and it's, it's like you said, how we started, it's, it's gritty. Like every Monday when I do Bulletproof Monday, I go in, not an assistant, and I respond personally to all the people who commented. And I thank personally everyone who shared it. Um, and, I, and, and it's that stuff that, you know, Gary V does. If you look at, you know, you can't just wake up and be Gary V. I've done speaking events with Gary You can't just can't, please, no, just be, let Gary V. Don't, don't try Gary. and match his energy if you meet him. You'll look like an, a jerk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you can't, you can't be Marcus. You, can't, you know, you have to be you. And I love that. It's powerful. And, and Marcus, I want to thank you for being here, especially before you're taking off. And um, to everyone listening and watching, 
if you have a comment, if you have a question, go to SusanSly.com, just chat in the chat bot we have. I personally, if you have a great question around building a business, about marketing, I answer those live on um, Bulletproof Monday, so I'm happy to do that for you. If this show has been great, of course, Marcus and I would like a five-star review because we just would, um, and we'd love for you to share it on your social media platform. So thanks again, Marcus, for being here. You are amazing, brother. Man, you're world-class. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another epic episode of the Susan Slot Project. For more tips, strategies, and ideas, visit www.susansly.com.